thing about Noah and the Ark, though, if you go back to that, that story is very similar to a story that's in the Epic of Gilgamesh. They found, like, just looking at DNA, that all of humanity at one point got wiped out except for, like, one village. Everyone has descended from uh, the same group of about 5,000 people. Picture this, a fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, cradling the dawn of recorded human history. This is where the Sumerians thrived, a civilization that emerged over 5,000 years ago and left an enduring mark on the world. They were one of the first cultures to develop writing, a monumental achievement that changed the course of human history forever. Their story starts with small farming communities, taking advantage of the rich soil deposited by the rivers, but things evolved rapidly. Around 4000 BCE, a city called Uruk started booming, becoming one of the world's first major cities. This period, known as the Uruk period, saw the invention of writing, the rise of impressive architecture, and the expansion of trade networks, laying the groundwork for the complex societies that would emerge later. Fast forward a few centuries, and by 2900 BCE, Several powerful city-states like Ur, Eridu, and Lagash were vying for dominance. Each city had its own unique political structure, religious beliefs, and cultural identity. Think of them as independent kingdoms, each with its own way of life. These city-states were the heart and soul of Sumerian civilization. Each one had a central city surrounded by fields, and every aspect of life, from politics and economics to religion and social structure, revolved around this core. The king, or Lugal, was at the top of the pyramid, seen as a divinely chosen leader responsible for the city's well-being. He led the army, ensured justice was served, and oversaw religious ceremonies. Over time, priests also became increasingly influential, reflecting the strong connection between religion and government. Speaking of the economy, the Sumerians were farmers at heart, cultivating grains, legumes, and fruits. Their system was like a big redistribution network. People would contribute a portion of their harvest as taxes, and these resources would then be distributed based on social status and needs. Trade was also crucial, allowing them to acquire things like wood and metal that they couldn't find locally. But not everyone was equal in Sumerian society. There was a clear hierarchy, with the king, priests and officials at the top, followed by regular citizens like farmers, artisans and traders. Then came the slaves, mostly captured in wars or forced into servitude due to debt. Religion played a central role in Sumerian life, with each city worshipping its own patron god, believed to protect and bring prosperity. These gods lived in grand temples, which were not just places of worship, but also economic hubs and storehouses. The ziggurat, a massive stepped pyramid, was a distinctive feature, serving as the temple's home and a central point for religious activities. We talked about the rise of Sumerian city-states and how they functioned, but let's zoom in and explore some of the most famous Sumerian cities. Uruk is like the OG of cities. Often considered the world's first true city, it was a hotbed of innovation and power. Imagine massive ziggurats like the Anu Ziggurat and the White Temple. Pretty impressive for a civilization that thrived thousands of years ago. Uruk also gets major props for inventing cuneiform writing forever changing how humans communicated. Another big name is Ur. This city-state was famous for its towering ziggurat of Ur, a testament to their devotion to the moon god Nana. But Ur wasn't just about religion. It was also a bustling hub for trade and military power. Archaeological evidence shows they were wealthy and artistically skilled. Eridu claims the title of one of the oldest Sumerian cities. Steeped in religious significance, it was dedicated to Enki, the god of water knowledge and creation. Think of it as a major center for early religious practices, as evidenced by the archaeological finds unearthed there. Lagash wasn't just another pretty face, it was known for its artistic and architectural contributions. This city wielded significant religious and political influence, leaving behind a treasure trove of archaeological evidence, including sculptures and inscriptions that offer a glimpse into Sumerian culture. So, these are just a few examples of the vibrant and diverse city-states that formed the backbone of Sumerian civilization. 
Each city had its own unique character and contributions, making them an enduring part of human history. Imagine a world without writing. Now imagine the revolutionary moment when humans first captured their thoughts and stories on a permanent medium. That's exactly what the Sumerians achieved around 3400 BCE with the invention of cuneiform writing. It all started with simple pictures, think emojis, but for ancient Mesopotamia. These pictographs were used on clay tokens to keep track of things like goods and livestock. But over time, these pictures evolved. They became more stylized and eventually transformed into the wedge-shaped symbols we know as cuneiform. While invented by the Sumerians, it was later adapted by other cultures like the Akkadians, Babylonians, and even the Hittites, proving its versatility across languages. So what did people write about with this fancy new writing system? Well, everything from everyday business to epic tales. Cuneiform tablets were used to record economic transactions, track taxes and inventories, and even document the sale of land and livestock. They were basically the spreadsheets and receipts of the ancient world. But cuneiform wasn't just about numbers and practicalities. It was also a powerful tool for storytelling. The Epic of Gilgamesh, a timeless masterpiece exploring themes of friendship, heroism and mortality, is just one example of the rich literary tradition preserved in cuneiform. Poets and hymn writers also used this script to create beautiful works dedicated to their gods and goddesses, offering us a window into their religious beliefs and practices. Cuneiform even played a crucial role in law and order. The Code of Hammurabi, one of the earliest and most complete written legal codes in history, was inscribed in cuneiform. This code established laws governing everything from contracts and property rights to personal conduct, providing a glimpse into the complexities of Babylonian society. Legal disputes and their resolutions were also documented in cuneiform tablets, shedding light on the legal processes of the time. And let's not forget religion. Mythological stories, epic tales and even instructions for religious rituals were all meticulously recorded in cuneiform. These texts not only reveal the fascinating mythology of these ancient civilizations, but also highlight the deep connection between religion and daily life in Mesopotamia. Beyond writing and city life, the Sumerians were also total brainiacs, making significant contributions to astronomy, math and agriculture. These weren't just random discoveries, they had a lasting impact that continues to shape our world today. Let's start with the stars. The Sumerians were among the first to develop a lunar calendar, keeping track of time based on the moon's cycles. This calendar helped them plan their farming, religious festivals, and even their daily routines. Think of it as an ancient to-do list synced to the moon. Their calendar had 12 months, but they weren't afraid to add an extra one every now and then to stay in sync with the seasons. The Sumerians were also math whizzes, inventing the sexagesimal system, which is basically a fancy way of saying they used base 60 instead of our usual base 10. This system might seem strange at first, but it actually had advantages, especially for complex calculations. It's the reason we have 60 minutes in an hour and 360 degrees in a circle, both remnants of this ingenious Sumerian invention. Fractions and advanced astronomical calculations also benefited from this system. Speaking of astronomy, the Sumerians were stargazers extraordinaire. They meticulously recorded their observations of the night sky, mapping out constellations, planets and even individual stars. This celestial mapping wasn't just for fun, it helped them navigate, keep track of time, and even understand the universe around them, influencing their religious beliefs and practices. Some historians even believe the ziggurats, those massive temple structures, served as giant observatories. Imagine priests using these high platforms to chart the movements of planets and stars, determining the best times to plant and harvest crops. Now things get a bit more controversial. There's a guy named Zechariah Sitchin who had some interesting but ultimately unproven ideas about the Sumerians and their epic poem, the Enuma Elish. Sitchin believed that Nibiru, a planet mentioned in the poem, wasn't just a symbolic thing, but a real giant planet in our solar system with a super long orbit like 3,600 years long. Based on his interpretation of ancient texts and artwork, he thought this planet's movements might explain some cosmic events described in the Enuma Elish. He also argued that the Sumerians had way more advanced knowledge of the cosmos than we previously thought, thanks to some helpful extraterrestrial visitors from Nibiru called the Anunnaki. 
Sitchin believed these weren't just gods, but actual beings who came to Earth looking for gold and ended up genetically engineering early humans to be their workers. This genetic manipulation, according to Sitchin, explains the rapid development of Sumerian civilization with its fancy writing, impressive architecture, and organized government.